Continuing on with my favourite video series to make here for my channel, this week we're going to be taking a look at probably one of the most controversial weapons in Battlefield 1. Everyone loves to call people out for using it because it's one of those weapons that simply makes you perform better. We're going to be taking a look at the Italian designed SMG, the Beretta Model 1918. And as always with these videos, we're not only going to be looking at the weapon in Battlefield 1, but in real life as well. Let's start with Battlefield 1 though. The Automatico is an SMG given to the Assault class, and it comes in three different variants. We have the Trench, the Storm, and the Factory. Now the Factory variant comes unlock as standard as soon as you launch multiplayer for the first time. It is your starter weapon. The Trench is unlocked at Assault Rank 1, and the Storm variant at Rank 3. Each of these variants costs 200 War Bonds for you to unlock. Now the weapon has somewhat of a bad stigma surrounding it, and it hasn't been helped much with DICE's reluctance to do anything about the fact that it can absolutely obliterate people at close to medium range. The factory variant is your bog standard base, it offers no tangible benefits really over the other two. The trench is geared towards hip fire accuracy, and it should only be used in that fire mode. Don't bother aiming down the sights with it because you gain no benefit whatsoever. This increased hip fire accuracy means in extreme close quarters, you can just lay waste to pretty much anybody who steps inside your crosshairs. That killing potential is greatly helped as well by the extreme rate of fire value, 900, the fastest in Battlefield 1. No need to aim down the sight, simply click that fire button, and 9 times out of 10, you're going to land the kill that you're looking for. Now the Storm variant is one that I personally prefer to use over the Trench. The main reason for that is it comes tuned to favour Aimed Fire, or ADS, over hip fire. Essentially, I like to use the Storm variant because I have this incessant need to aim down the sights of every single weapon that I use. I'm simply used to doing it from previous Battlefield titles, where aiming down the sights was the accepted thing to do. And I'm not a fan of having variants in this game, Battlefield 1, that reward the use of hip fire. That's just a personal preference, and I'm sure many of you will prefer using that trench variant, however. Using the Storm variant puts you at somewhat of a disadvantage over the Trench variant, because you've got that massive vertical magazine sticking up into your view, very similar to the Masson MG in that regard. Again, it's this inherent disadvantage that makes me want to use the weapon. I know I'll be worse off than somebody using an SMG that's geared towards aimed accuracy, like the MP18 Optical, for example. But it makes me smile when I'm still using a weapon, and I can go on some awesome killstreaks with that weapon that's not designed to do that. I am of the opinion that this weapon still needs to be balanced a bit more. I think it's far too easy to get kills with it, and the trench variant makes it even easier to get those kills that you are racking up in close quarters due to its high rate of fire and that extremely high damage per second. DICE so far haven't done much to address this, but here's to hoping they'll do something about it in the near future. But is the Automatico in Battlefield 1 anything like its real-life counterpart? Has DICE accurately depicted the weapon in their game, or has it been moulded and shaped differently to make it a fun weapon to use? Let's find out. The Beretta Model 1918, what you might know as the Automatico in Battlefield 1, was never designed from scratch. It actually came from something much larger. The weapon is considered by many to be a descendant of the world's first submachine gun, a term which hadn't been coined at the time that the weapon was made and put into production. The design and operation of the weapon came heavily from the VR Perosa, another Italian weapon which is considered to be the world's first submachine gun. 
This weapon is also present in Battlefield 1 in its handheld infantry form, depicted in a similar way to how it might have been used during World War 1 combat. The Viaparosa was initially designed as a weapon that could be operated in planes by a secondary gunner. The weapon featured a double barrel design connected together but firing from two separate barrels and using its own magazine. Its effectiveness in the skies was fairly good at the start of the war but its power started to degrade as airplane armour improved. Not only that, but its 9mm ammunition wasn't exactly fit for purpose. But soon the Italians realised its greater potential as a ground support weapon. By November 1916, the VR Perosas were starting to become a more common sight in the Italian Alps as they fought back the Germans and the Austro-Hungarians. And by May 1917, roughly three VR Perosas were issued to each infantry battalion. Having moved from an anti-air role to a ground support role, being an infantry weapon now, it still didn't quite fit the purpose that the Italian forces needed. They needed a weapon that was adept at clearing these small pockets of cover and enemy trench lines. Fighting in hand-to-hand -hand combat left the soldiers extremely vulnerable to attack and long rifles with bayonets were cumbersome to use in confined spaces. This is where the Beretta Model 1918 would shine and became the weapon that the Italians had so desperately needed. Now Beretta didn't do too much to the design of the weapon, they simply used the parts that the original VR Perosa had. Magazines still fed from the top and shell casings still dropped out the bottom and the magazine only emptied via gravity alone, thus its need being on the top of the weapon. Beretta made this solid single piece wooden frame and added their own trigger grip to the gun and essentially called it a day. They'd reduced the weapon from this cumbersome, heavy anti-air gun that had been Frankensteined into a machine gun for Italian ground troops and they turned it into the world's first true submachine gun fit for the purpose of close quarters combat. Or had they? The first units of the Beretta 1918 only came with a semi-automatic fire option, no fully automatic mode. This essentially made the first ever units of the Beretta M1918 carbines, and then the preceding units were fitted with a second trigger for automatic fire, and they were the submachine guns. Because Beretta had simply modified the existing VR Perosa weapon to create their own Model 1918 weapon, stocks of the VR Perosa decreased massively during later stages of the war. It became increasingly more unlikely that you would see an Italian soldier using one. The 1918 could fire at roughly 900 rounds a minute using the same mechanism from the VR Perosa, which could achieve a much faster 1200 rounds a minute. Could you imagine a 1200 round per minute automatico in Battlefield 1? That would just be insane. Beretta also chose to attach a folding bayonet system to the 1918 in case a soldier ran out of ammunition during combat, and they could use it as a last resort if they really needed to. The British did actually experiment with the VR Perosa a little bit, they chambered one for their own 455 Webley automatic round, but it never made it beyond initial trials. So then, I think it's clear that the Automatico in Battlefield 1 is very similar to the Beretta Model 1918 that was created during World War 1, a high rate of fire rifle capable of taking out enemies in close quarters, exactly what the Italians needed. I don't think the hate though is going to stop for the Automatico in Battlefield 1. DICE definitely need to do some balancing to get this weapon under control. But thank you very much for watching this episode of Battlefield 1 Weapon History. Let me know your thoughts on the Automatico down below in the comments section. Make sure you keep things clean, I know it's going to be a heated debate down there. And maybe let me know what weapon you'd like to see in the next episode. But until next time, my name is Westy. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.